Welcome to Pure Talk. Today I am showing you a look that you can use for Valentine's Day or any day of the year. This one is particularly inspired by Valentine's Day and it's inspired by a very important topic that I want to talk to you about. Your value. You are so valuable. Your worth is completely unmeasurable. Not only do you have beauty, but you're smart and you have the power to decide to keep going. You have the power to decide if you're gonna be a victor or a victim in this life. You have the power to decide if you're going to be an overcomer. And you're completely amazing. Every single one of us are designed very intricately. We all have our own personalities, our own thoughts, our own opinions, our own ideas, our own creativity, our own gifts, strengths, weaknesses. We are all so unique and so beautiful. And just like the snowflakes, there is not one person that is, is made exactly the way another person is made. Even if you're twins, if you, if you know any twins, which I know of several twins, they're very different. Their personalities are different. The way they react to things are different. The way they handle things are different. Um, one may be more optimistic. One may be, um, you know, gifted in certain areas that the other one is not. And so we are all, we just are all very unique. Every single one of us are special and important. And most importantly, completely irreplaceable. That being said, this look is inspired by how beautiful and unique you are, how wonderful and important and valuable you are. And so I thought it would be perfect to use these colors. Unlimited, unboxable, victorious, boundless, worthy, and valued. Let's get started. Normally when doing a makeup look, a lot of people start with base. And your base is your foundation and your concealer. So basically covering the skin is usually one of the first steps. Um, not completely, but just, you know, wherever you feel like you need some coverage. I'm not gonna start with that today because with this look, it's gonna get a little bit messy and there is gonna be some fallout on the cheeks. And so I'm not gonna even touch the skin yet. I'm gonna start with eyes today. So there's two specific brushes I'm going to be really focusing on today. One, and it's a little bit dirty from yesterday because I did do this look yesterday. Um, but this is like a, this is a fluff brush, but it's definitely, it has like an angle to it. And then the other one I'm gonna use is, this is another fluff brush. Eyeshadow fluff, that's what I call it. It's a blending brush basically for eyeshadows. But this one doesn't have an angle. This one just kind of goes up and straight and out. So it's not tapered and dense. So those are the two that I'm gonna be using just to apply the makeup. Um, so I wanted to let you know that. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is start with my eyeliner. And this is gonna get quite messy, but it's okay. I love this eyeliner because it's waterproof, easy to blend, and it's one of those automatic ones that you don't have to keep on sharpening. So that's always nice, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to create a line it's not gonna be above the lashes. So normally when you're doing a liner on top of the eye, right, you're going right above the lashes. This time, I wanna challenge you to try to do your liner almost like in between the lashes, so super close. And, and I like to do this with my eyes closed. And you're going like in between. Do you see how that's starting to form? some depth right here. Now it's gonna look a little messy in the beginning, but wait until we get the blending and it's gonna look okay. So here we go. Now this is gonna automatically start to go down to your lower eye. Don't worry about that. We can clean that up later. We really can't help that, okay? Because if you're doing this with your eyes closed like I do, because I just find it easier, it is gonna go on the bottom. All right, it's actually a nice way to save time if you do want to do the bottom, right? I know somebody who actually lines her top and bottom at the same time, all the time. That's like how she does it. Pretty neat. But that's not what we're doing today. So just try to stay as close as you can to the lashes themselves. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same on the other eye. Even though I did my left eye off camera, I wanted to leave it as messy as it looks so that you can see that it's okay to do it messy. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take some trusty Q-tips. You're gonna take the Q-tip and you're gonna start blending the top. Just very lightly, very gently. It's just gonna blend it in because we don't want this to look like a, like a purposeful line up there or a harsh line up there. 
We just wanted to add some dimension. What's nice about lining your eyes this way too is there's nothing that is very, very obvious, you know, that you um, have, you know, really gone in and lined the heck out of your eyes. It doesn't look like that. It looks very natural. You're basically just thickening your lashes by adding that liner in these little hidden places. It's a nice way to line your eyes if you're looking for a more natural look. So you can definitely tell that this is my left eye and I am a righty, so this one didn't come out as neat as this one. So that's okay. What I'm gonna do is actually put a little bit of makeup remover on the end of my Q-tip and I'm just going to take off what got onto the skin, the part that I don't, where I don't want it. So just right here. So you can see the eye is still well defined but it doesn't have the, the black going up onto the skin. It's just where the lashes are. Next thing is you're gonna go back in with that same pencil and you're gonna do the waterline um, from basically from here to the corner. So you're gonna go, I like to do it this way, just go right, right in there like this. If you've never done it before, you might want, it might help you to just kind of pull up a little bit, but basically what you're doing is you're getting the skin directly underneath the lashes. And you can see that my eyes are starting to really be quite defined at this point. Next step is I'm gonna take the angled fluff brush and I'm gonna go in with my lightest color, which is unlimited. And I'm gonna place that color right underneath the brow. I forgot to put primer. I'm going to go ahead and put on some primer. So now that I have the primer on, I'm gonna go ahead and start with my first color. And I'm just gonna pat this right underneath the brows. Next color I'm going in with is Unboxable. And this color is going to cover from here all the way to down here. So it's gonna be your entire lid section except for the place where you highlighted. Hopefully you're starting to see that color. It is so beautiful in person. I hope the camera picks up the gorgeous peachy pigment of it. Actually, let me put it on my finger. You might be able to see it better. It's like a pearlized peach. That's how I would describe this. I'm gonna actually go in with my straight fluff brush and I'm gonna go into the color Boundless and I'm, I'm putting a very small amount on the brush, also shaking the brush, and I'm gonna go in to the outer corner here and I'm gonna stay within the crease as much as I can. It's a very fluffy brush so it is gonna go out a little bit. I'm gonna do the same on the other side. So the depth of what you want this dark crease color to be, you know, whether you want it to be really dark or really light or medium, you know, that's completely up to you. I also would suggest that you wait until the end to kind of gauge how dark you want to make it. That's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm just kind of getting you know, a little bit on for now, but I will probably darken it later. And as I'm blending, I'm gonna start blending all the way in very lightly and just mostly staying on the outside and doing a little bit of a V. I call this a V blend where you're going here and then here and you're creating a V shape. I also like to do some circle, small circular motions but you wanna really keep that inside the crease. You're gonna blend and blend and blend so that there's no harsh lines. One thing to keep in mind is that if you're doing a lot of shimmer on the eyes, you don't wanna put a lot of shimmer and glow on the face because you don't wanna just look like straight shimmer coming at somebody, okay? So I would go a little less on the face and more on the eyes or more on the face, less on the eyes. So, you know, pick one and run with it. I'm gonna take a eyeshadow brush that's a little smaller and this is a good crease brush for adding a little bit more color just because I am creating an evening look I'm gonna go in with boundless and I'm gonna just add a little bit more in this crease and basically what we're doing by having all these layers of colors we're adding a lot of dimension to the eye so we have this part up here that's highlighted and it's kind of popping a little bit then we have from the lid all the way up that's all one color but now we're creating a, a third color by putting in this darker color here 
which is going to make anything that goes anything that's darker is going to recess so it's going to go in rather than pop out and so it's going to add you know that dimension of your crease to the look and when your brush is really light and doesn't have much on it I would go all the way in but keep most of the color on the outside. Then you're gonna to need to take a nice fluff brush and blend, blend, blend. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into that same royalty palette and I'm gonna pick the color Victorious this time. And with a damp brush, I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna take my angle brush and I'm gonna to try to make this as thin as possible. I'm just gonna go really lightly only on the end. We're not going all the way in like we did before with the automatic pencil. We went in, you know, we started basically here and went all the way out. But with Victorious, the damp shadow, because we've got a damp brush, we're dampening the shadow, we're gonna just go from the mid section here to the end and very light. Basically for this look, your eyes are gonna be very like this. They're gonna be going out this way and we're accentuating as much as possible this part, this portion of the eye. Now if you have rounder eyes, totally cool. You can still do this, all right? But you're just gonna um, focus a little bit more on the tail when we get there. So let's keep going. And you're not gonna make a tail. You're just gonna just keep it thin and go to the very end. So now that's done on both eyes and what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go in with a thinner brush and this is a very thin brush I like to use for detailing, especially when I'm doing a cat eye and a tail. What I'm gonna do is with the shadow damp again, I'm actually mixing it with a little bit of water. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna start creating a very small tail. So I'm gonna take it right from the top here and I'm gonna go follow the natural, um, the natural form of my lashes. So if my lashes normally kind of curve a little bit at the end, that's what I'm following. And then I'm gonna go down a little bit to fill in on the bottom, just a tad. My recommendation here is because you don't want one to be longer than the other and you don't want one to look more lopsided than the other, try to look straight ahead into your mirror. My mirror happens to be positioned right over here. So you wanna look straight ahead into your mirror and while you're looking straight into your mirror, straight ahead, you're going to go ahead and, you know, paint, you know, very slowly, very carefully with very small strokes. Don't try to make it too, too perfect. You know, if, if it's slightly smaller than the other, it's really not gonna be very noticeable. If it's slightly, slightly off, I'm not talking about major, discrepancies here. So I'm about just slight ones. They're not going to be noticeable. Okay. We're looking for the effect of the look, but you do want to try to get it as close as possible. Next thing I'm going to do is take another Q-tip and I'm going to blend the line a little bit more on top. If you have like a smudge, a smudge brush, which is, um, it's not really a brush. It's like a smudger it's called. And basically it's for smudging liner. And you can use something like that too, to kind of go in and just smudge. Um, but I find the Q-tips just be a lot softer. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all, I'm gonna take that same straight fluff brush that I used. I'm gonna make sure that it's clean. And then I'm gonna dip it in the color worthy. I'm gonna put a very small amount and I'm gonna just do a little tap in the center here on both eyes. Just a little tap tap of color. Okay, now I'm gonna clean off my brush and I'm gonna blend that slightly. I don't want it to be too harsh. The color is so strong, it's so hard to get it off of the brush. But, so I'm just gonna blend it a little bit on both sides. So you're still getting that pretty pop of color, but it's definitely softer. Next, I'm going to take another kind of brush, something a little bit more flat and dense, and I'm going to dip it into the 7K color Valued. And I want Valued to come and meet Worthy. 
Okay, so we're gonna start in here. Make sure that you don't pass this line right here. Okay. And we're gonna have it come and just meet where we put the pink. Okay, so now that gold color, that valued, beautiful valued color is coming up to meet the pink and I'm just gonna blend with a clean brush, fairly clean, <laughs> just any lines. And I do that by very, just tapping it ever so gently in the center, wherever there's a line. So think about, you know, you wanna just kind of smooth out, you wanna iron out that seam. So, you know, wherever there is one, you can just gently tap. And don't worry if you're making a mess on the inner corner. Don't worry if there's mess down here. We're gonna clean all that up afterwards. You just want to make sure that everything's looking good pretty much above the lid and up. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this beautiful color value into eyeliner. Uh, so I'm gonna wet it. Now, you know, you might ask how much water do I need to use when I wanna turn a 7K into eyeliner? Basically what you wanna do is you wanna get it to be a creamy consistency. So it shouldn't, you know, look watery, it should be creamy. And you can always test it out on your hand, you know, to make sure that it, it does make a nice line before you get started. So, like right now, that's a little too watery. So what I need to do is add a little bit more of the 7K to the water so that it's more of a creamy consistency rather than a liquid. And then we're gonna add this right above. We're gonna do top eyeliner now. This one we're not trying to hide in between the lashes or put very, very thin. This one we're actually trying to make a bold statement of top eyeliner with this pretty gold. Don't make it too thick, but you know, make it thick enough that it's meant, it looks like it's meant to be there. And you're gonna take that right down to the end. So now going in with a much smaller eyeliner brush. Okay, this is a really thin one as you can see. What I'm gonna do is go into that same gold liner that we made and I'm going to follow the tail that we already put there in black. I'm gonna follow it with the gold on top, right? So if you can just watch, I'm gonna trace it out. Like that. I like to really work from the back of my hand. You can just add, you know, more 7K or more water as needed. And I'm gonna go ahead and follow So with my eye open, I'm creating another tail on top of the tail that's already there. The bottom tail is basically giving me a uh, like a structure to follow. But basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the gold, you're gonna go with the gold right on top of it, but then you're gonna go past it. And that's gonna start to basically meld the two together a little bit. So the black's gonna go into the gold slightly, um, and that's okay but the darker part of the tail, because we started, you know, um, outlining it in black, or sketching it out in black, you know, that's always gonna stay a little bit darker. So next thing we're gonna do is actually clean up a little bit because this did get quite messy. So I like to use these cotton rounds I'm gonna put a little bit of makeup remover on there and I'm just gonna go all underneath my eyes. And my skin is really sensitive so it might get a little red just from me pressing. Make sure you don't mess up your tail. You can get close to it but try not to hit it. Now the eyes look really subtle right now and that's okay, they're supposed to look pretty subtle for this look but you know, as we continue with the look, you're gonna see that they are gonna, um, they're gonna, they're gonna pop nicely. Next step is foundation. So first thing I'm gonna do before my foundation is put on my illuminator. I'm gonna take a little tiny bit of illuminator and I'm gonna put it where I want it to illuminate. So I want it to just kind of create a nice natural glow over here on this part 
of my skin. I'm just putting it really lightly there. I can also put it here a little. And then I'm gonna take the foundation and I'm just gonna dab it wherever I want, just a little bit of foundation. I'm probably gonna go really light with this. Okay, then this brush is really great and really terrible at the same time because the bristles come out and they go all over my face and it's really annoying. This is an old brush that I've had for a really long time, but um, it does do the job as far as blending. So I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna start to blend out the foundation before it dries because it dries kind of fast. Keeping underneath my eyes really clean, not putting any foundation there, just keeping the foundation to my face and blending it. You wanna, Pay special attention to blending near the hairline and the jawline. I'm gonna take just a tiny bit of that illuminator and I'm just gonna just kind of tap it very lightly over here where I want some natural illumination. Keeping it really light. Now I'm gonna do some concealing and I definitely wanna get some concealer underneath these eyes. And what I'm gonna do because I have such dark circles, which I don't know if you can even see them as much as I can see them, but they are pretty dark and I can especially see them in the bathroom. I guess just the way the lighting is in my bathroom. They are really just dark. I'm gonna mix a little bit of color corrector with my concealer. So the concealer will be obviously concealing. The color corrector will be um, working a little bit harder for me to cancel out the dark circles and then the concealer also has collagen in it so that's going to bring down any additional puffiness that might still be lingering from my not so great night's sleep and I'm just placing it on the back of my hand to mix the two together I like to blend the cream corrector first and warm it up on my hand and then I mix the concealer in with it I'm gonna add a little bit more concealer under the eyes. And you wanna do that in a tapping motion, not a wiping motion, because if you wipe it, you're gonna wipe it right off. Next, I'm gonna take out the contour kit, and with a small blush brush, I'm gonna start building in some light contour. Going in with that contour color right here, right where that goes in. Small circles, just really lightly building that up. I'm gonna put some on top of the forehead too. This is gonna really warm up the face. So it looks like my brush wasn't perfectly clean, which is most unfortunate. It had a little bit of like a pink on it and that's not good because you don't want to contour with pink. So I'm just gonna try to blend this as much as I can. I like to contour under my chin and on the jawline. It can look kind of harsh when I first do it, but then I blend it. So I did a lot of blending with this big fluff brush off camera because when I started my contouring, my blush brush was not super clean, so that's my mistake. Always make sure your brushes are clean before you start in with a new color. So I kind of started um, contouring with like a little bit of pink on my blush, which was not good. You don't wanna do that, okay? So just keep in mind, it's gonna, I might look a little more pink than I should, okay? Kind of is what it is. So I'm actually going to create the lip gloss now and I'm really excited about this because I'm gonna use the color worthy as blush and lip gloss I want to apply the lip gloss first because that's gonna help me gauge how much of the blush that I actually want so there's multiple things that you can use in order to make this lip gloss and what I'm gonna use is one of these little lip gloss wands they usually come with a lip gloss if you buy them but you can also buy the disposable ones and just have them on hand they're really great to have on hand so another thing that you could do is use a lip gloss um, like a lip brush or I wouldn't recommend using a Q-tip just because the cotton parts from the Q-tip might end up getting stuck to your lips and getting stuck to the lip gloss. 
so I probably wouldn't use a Q-tip. I'm actually going to go in and highlight with um, Unboxable from the Determination palette, and I'm going to use a nice little angle brush for that. This was the crease brush that we used. I'm actually going to clean it, and I'm gonna use it to highlight in the corner of my eye as well. And I'm using that same beautiful color, Unboxable. You know, I didn't do this when I originally created this look, but I have an idea. I'm gonna take this gorgeous color, and I'm gonna highlight right in here too. So that's going underneath the eye, from the corner here to the midpoint. Yeah, that's adding a nice touch that I really like. Mm -hmm. So next, we can go in with the lip gloss. Next thing you're gonna wanna do is blot this. So I would do an inside blot first, and then one light outside. And this way the lips aren't too strong. Now, if you wanna wear it darker, you certainly can. Um, I wanna wear this just a little bit more subtle, so I'm gonna keep the lips light. But you can put it as, you know, you can make them as dark or as light as you'd like. When I did this look yesterday, it wasn't as warm in the house, and I feel like my cheeks weren't as pink as they are right now. I also didn't, uh, I don't know if I put the, the uh, foundation on as light, so my natural color is definitely coming through. I'm gonna tap the smallest amount possible on my cheeks. My cheeks are kind of already pink. My cheeks are already glowing. They already have a pink hue to them, so I don't want that to, I don't want it to be too much. <clears throat> I had to adjust my color quite a bit because the I've lost a lot of sunlight. <laughs> When I first started, it was really sunny, and now not so much. So yeah, I had to fix that a little bit. The other thing I want to do is just add a little bit of powder. So the powder is going to be placed where I concealed, which was underneath the eyes. And there was just a, a few other small por uh, parts where I concealed. So let's make sure the brush is clean. And then I'm going to dip it into my powder. And I'm just going to put a little bit under the eyes. over here and just like you know wherever I get normally a little shiny and that's it on to brows first thing I like to do is brush my brows and I do that using a spoolie and I usually brush them up then with a clean angle brush I'm gonna go into my brow powder cleaning a little bit of it off I want it really really light because I really don't want the focus on the brows I want the brows to look as natural as possible so I'm just gonna fill in wherever I feel that it's a little bit sparse. I'm just kind of outlining the shape of the brow a little bit. So I'm dipping my brush into the brow powder and then I'm actually cleaning the brush off just a little bit. And I'm gonna go ahead and enhance the shape just a tad. And then fill in where I feel like it's needed. You could even do this with a smaller brush if you want and just, you know, keep two very light-handed, um, short strokes. You know, if you, if you take a good look at your brows, you can see that, you know, when you look at them, it's not just a line or a glob. It's, they're, they're intricate little hairs, you know, that make up your brow. And so if you think of when you're drawing more in, you want to kind of keep that same idea of drawing in little intricate hairs. So that's why you do the short, you know, small little strokes. And then you're gonna take your spoolie again and you're just gonna brush what you've done. And this is gonna give it an even more natural effect. It's gonna just blend everything in together so that that brow powder just becomes part of your brows and they all blend nicely. If I ever put on a little bit too much, I just take it off with a Q-tip, and I just do that very simply by running the Q-tip over the brow, just to lighten it up a bit. If you find that you know it's a little too light and you need to darken it up a little bit, you can always go back in. But you know, just just kind of play with it until they look very, very natural, but they are also filled in without any empty spots. 
at this point when you can look at everything you've got the brows done you've got your lips done you have some blush on now you can really gauge looking at everything as a whole how much shadow you want to go with you know so what I'm gonna do is actually I'm gonna bring the ante up on the shadow just a little bit that's it just a teeny tiny bit because you want that to make a statement but just not too harsh of a statement now another thing that you can do if you want you can you can go up with the blush um, up here just a tad I'm gonna be really light on the blush because my cheeks are pretty pink already I'm gonna go ahead and add some single lashes on here I'm not gonna do a full strip I really want to accentuate the ends of the eyes here so I'm gonna put three on this side and three on this side and you're gonna see how the eyes are just gonna go like that even more So now I put some color in my hair. I actually took the same exact color that I used for blush and for the pop of pink on the eyeshadow and also for lips and put it in my braid. I also used the gold that we used as eyeliner and on the inner part of the lid as shadow and I put that kind of wove it within the braid as well. So I'm going to put on earrings, change my top and I added on the lashes. I said I was gonna do three on each side, but I ended up doing about four on each side. I don't know, it's just kinda how it worked out today. I thought that um, I was gonna do the same exact way I did yesterday, but as I was doing it, I said, oh, you know what, let's just add four. <laughs> Before I get changed and put on the earrings, I wanna add a flesh color pencil to the waterline. I'm gonna go in and just go into the waterline here. So I went in with this flesh colored pencil and I went on the inner waterline. And the reason why I did that was because, you know, with all the things that we did with the eyeshadow and the eyeliner and the blending, you know, I just wanted to clean up that waterline so that it's a very uh, clean flesh color inside there. And that also opens up the eye a little bit more. I'm gonna put a pop of color on my nails. I'm gonna use the same color, the pink and gold that I used in the braid and that we've used all throughout this look. And I'll be right back. So this is pretty much the final look. As you can see, I got the nails done, and what I did was I took the pink 7K Worthy. It's on lips, it's on blush, it's that little pop of color that you can see on the eyeshadow, and it's on my nails. Then what I did was I took, took that same beautiful um, pink color and put it throughout the braid in different uh, parts of my braid. And I have a little bit of pink in my outfit, so it's kind of tying all those colors together. Yeah, I love it. And the other thing I did was I took the gold that we used in the look, the 7K color valued, and I took that and put that through the braid as well. And I also dotted my nails. They have cute little dots. I used a tool that has one, one side is like a small circle, the other side is a large circle, and I just kind of dotted randomly. So they look like gold polka dots on my pink nails, and I love this look. And uh, then I wanted to put earrings on just for a little extra touch of pink. So this is the whole thing. I think it's really fun to play with all these different colors and to be able to do so many things with them just really brings your creativity to the next level. I had severe bags under my eyes today and I was fighting with them, wrestling with them. I even had to put spoons under them and they still, they're still there a little bit, but they did get much better. You can definitely see the difference. You know, sometimes it just needs a little bit more TLC than other days when you do get a good night's sleep. I didn't have the time today to leave the spoons on my under eyes uh, for very long, but usually it does help when you have it on there for a good 15 minutes. I just absolutely love this look so much. It's just, to me, it's um, it's a beautiful look, but it's it's very subtle. It's very, it's um, it's a light look, it's soft. And so if you would like something nice and soft, then this is definitely the look for you. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you get to try this look and others like it. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and our website, gpurity.com. To see more videos like this one, subscribe to this channel. 
hit the little bell icon so that you're notified of when new videos come out.